Hi, welcome to 2020 Tasty Treats with Gourmet Quarter. I'm Susan Clare, Gourmet Quarter, and we're having a whole lot of fun with 20 sewing room appliques. So there's all sorts of things that we have in our sewing rooms and there's probably a whole lot more than we're going to be doing in applique. But this is certainly some of the things that we often see in sewing rooms. So we, as I said, we've got 20. We've already done six of them and these are up here on the little sewing room gallery behind me. So we're on to applique number seven. There is a pattern available. It's a downloadable pattern. It comes each day for 20 days as we do the 20 different appliques. And all the shapes are ready for tracing for applique and any other information you might need, like some stitching line indications and things like that. The pieces are numbered that indicates a placement order so that you get the underlapping in the right place. The pattern is available through gourmetquilter.com. Other than that, we're having a video and a pattern each day and we are on day seven. So I'll keep going and show you this. So this is a little bit like a sort of sampler. So we've got our little unpicker at the top, we've got a few buttons and we've got a couple of different spools of thread to put on for today. So I've actually already just started positioning a couple of bits. I've positioned my little unpicker here and it's just a little handle, the little metal bit and then often they have a little tiny red glass knob on them. This is probably larger than they normally are. Um, and then we've got some spools of thread here. So on the pattern there's a few lines that just indicate that that cone of thread might be wound like that. So what I've done is just with my light box I have my markings on the back on my fusible web paper and I've just traced through just with a pencil so that I can see those lines because I'll stitch those to indicate that thread winding round. Same thing on this spool of thread on, on the green is my thread colour here and I've just got a few lines to indicate where that will go. Also the little hole that's in the top of the spool that will go on there. And then on these little buttons, so there's five buttons and as you can see I've already done three of them here and I've marked the fourth one but I haven't finished the fifth one. I'm using this permanent marking pen to do the little button holes and they've all got four holes these buttons. These little fine marking pens work really well on fabric because they're permanent and they're just tiny. So the same thing I can see through. I've got the markings on the back on my paper and with the light box I can see through just enough. Now I'm filling in these little circles because they're just tiny and I think they'll show up a little bit better. You could sew these, you could embroider them, there's lots of things you could do. You could also mark them with a fine marking pen. So I've done all my markings, I'm ready now to finish positioning everything on my background. I might keep going with the buttons while I'm here. So what we need to keep an eye on with something like this where you've got quite a lot of little shapes. Now these buttons are sort of graduating down in size. So keeping an eye that they're staying reasonably straight from that point of view and, and spaced in between as well. You want that to be straight and then even at each end. And then when we've got these thread cones and things here, so this piece goes down first the inside of the cone. So we need to know how big that cone is going to be as to where we want to sit it. We lose quarter of an inch seam allowance all around so we have to remember that as well. So it can probably line up fairly well on the edge with that button. So I'm just positioning the inside of the cone at the moment because at the top of the cone would be still thread coming around behind and we need to position this piece behind the top. and. The, they often have quite a lot of thread on them, these cones, so the top of the cone is probably within the thread area and it's just a slightly darker shade. And then this piece can sit on top. So we should see a little bit of cone at the bottom and a little bit of cone at the top. It's looking pretty good. And then this little spool here. This also should sit more or less within this sort of line here, probably fairly level at the lower edge. It's not absolutely crucial but it's just giving an idea of how things are pleasing to look at really with this sort of thing. This has got a little red top on this spool and then we've got some thread here. Now the, th the thread in the pattern if you wanted to do it 
it indicates that there's a little bit of a loose thread hanging there. So we need to keep an eye on where that is and we might need to mark that so we don't forget to stitch it. So we're coming along here. So this is a solid piece but it's as if the thread was round or around the spool. And then I've got this little thing here. It doesn't really matter, the thread can be just coming up here I think. Just to stitch that when we get there. So now I can iron all of those in place. And I'm going to free motion stitch, so I just need to put my stabiliser behind. I'm using the light cotton batting for that. And I can go to the sewing machine. I've got my free motion foot, little open toe free motion foot. I've dropped my feet teeth and I have a grey thread. So now there's lots of things here to stitch. Uh, we might... The buttons are fairly simple outlining as is the um, picker. We've got a little bit of detail to do on here. So I might start with this thread spool. I might come around. Uh, I might actually do the tiny little hole in the top first. Which is really just a stitching line indicating the hole in the top. Go in it twice. Here. And then we can just keep coming straight onto this green here. So this is the green is a, a thread colour that's wound onto this spool. So I'm just going to come down the side, but as we get to a line indicating just the these are just sort of a few random lines that just indicates that there's something going on there rather than just a flat colour. So we don't necessarily go all the way across or anything. And I might do this bottom part of this spool while I'm here. And then I can come along here again and I'll come back along the green and then up and then the same thing with these lines that are coming in from this edge and what this does it just adds a little bit of interest rather than just a flat color now we've got this this one here that's wandering off is is here so we might do that while we're here so, and we're going to come back along that one as well and that wanders off into the distance there. And I can just keep coming along here now. Now there's just one more little bit of the school to do, so I'm going to come back along the green and come up to there. And so that's the little spool done. Didn't take so long. So I now need, I need to do very much the same thing on this one here, but I've got these lines to indicate there. And as I said, these are going uh, just outlines. So I'll start on this so that you can see, uh, maybe I'll start up near the top here because we've got all this little bit going on at the top here. So I'm going to come across this here and I'm just going to come back in and do the top of that little cone while I'm here and there is actually a little as if there's a little hole in the top there, a little mark and I can come along here and now I can come onto the cone and I think what I'm going to do with the lines and things I'm not going to do any of them going from this side when I come back up this side I'll come in and do those lines then so I can go all the way around this part at the moment. And one of the reasons for that is just so that you've got a line to sew to and start and stopping and things. I'm just going to do the base of this cone while I'm here.
Now here's a line that I do need to do because I'm at the other end of it already. Now they don't have to be double lines but it's often just as easy to come back to where we started. So I think you've probably got the hang of that now so I'll just keep going and show you when I've got something a little bit nearer the end there. So I've finished my cone of th thread and I've been doing the buttons. I've got the little last one to do and then the un little unpicker to do as well. Just a little tiny circle there, kind of cute. So we'll get onto this little unpicker now. And then we'll be finished with this one. So I'm just going to start here and do the little business end of the unpicker. So we've got this little red ball on the end here. So it is an unpicker, but it's also a little buttonhole slasher. If you're cutting buttonholes, you usually use something like this to cut the little slit. And that little red ball is really helpful when you do that because it shows you where it is. Okay, on to the handle. And then I can just skip onto the handle and we can just go around that and it will be done. Give it a quick press. And we can add it to our sewing room gallery. It's looking pretty exciting up there, just about ready to start sewing. We've got pretty much everything we need. So that was applique number seven in the series of 20. So I will see you again with sewing room applique number eight.